wait for a few people to jump in. We sometimes have a little bit of a delay between this and the recording. So alrighty then. So let's get started and let's begin. Welcome everyone to our next uh, episode in the webinar series. Today we are joined by Ali Reza Zarai, Zaman CEO, and today he's going to do all the talking. So I'm going to step back in a minute and he's going to guide you through some fantastic information around building a GXP compliant startup. So to get kicked off, I'm going to jump out and Ali, I'm going to give you the stage. Hello, everybody. Nice to see you. Nice to have you here. And if you're not here, you will for sure enjoy the recording. So I'm a friend of crisp information and uh, keeping things short. So I really try to finish this within 10 to 15 minutes. And today I would like to talk about startups in a GMP environment, um, the options you have, the things you need to consider and the opportunities that are basically being created right now in front of us. Let me share my slides. Oh, sorry, <laughs> my mistake. Can you see my slides, Candice? Ah, there you go. Oh, I must go <laughs> to the beginning. Okay. All right. So let's start. So just as a quick um, sum up what uh, we are, who I am. So look, on the left side, I started 12, um, 2012. On the right side, this picture is already one or two years old. Um, basically, GMP know-how gathered. GMP know-how put into a company, company is growing. Things you need to challenge or things you will be challenged with and you need to solve <laughs> uh, when doing anything in the area of GMP, pharma, medtech are things like process validation, global project management, ISO certificates, um, quality management systems, and many, many, many other topics. In general, you can say operational aspects and compliance aspects. Um, just as a sum up, why am I qualified to talk about this or why do I think I'm qualified to talk about this? Because we have done this in the past. We have customers. This is just a snapshot. Uh, we are developing medical devices for the European market. We are doing um, a lot of projects for pharma companies. And it's basically a never ending story. Loop after loop after loop after project after project. And this uh, makes us brings us into the position to make good judgment about the current market situation, trends and opportunities for the future. So this is now the actual topic. The pharma industry is growing, growing drastically and massively. As you can see uh, in the projections here, within just um, less than 10 years, basically, there will be more or less a trillion US dollar uh, added to the global pharmaceutical manufacturing market. This is just manufacturing. This is not even service providers or, let's say, additional suppliers like clinical studies or software developers. This is just a manufacturing area. So we all can agree the pharmaceutical market or the healthcare market, of course, is an incredible big market that is constantly growing. And if we look at certain areas, because this presentation is not really aiming at Europe or North America, it's more aiming towards the developing areas of the world. So Southeast Asia, maybe Africa, South America. Um, if you have a look, for example, in China, we can see that there is, of course, a constant drastic growth also in China. And also in India, or especially in India, there is a big, big growth. Please, again, these charts are always just a segment of the pharma market. As you can see here, this is the biotechnology market, basically. This does not include small molecules, for example. So in general, what I want to show you is that there is a massive growth in healthcare, pharma um, globally, and there is no end to be predicted. This will most likely keep growing throughout the entire century. 
I have no idea where this will lead to, yeah, but uh, it's for now a trend. Everybody can see that this is one of the strongest growing markets uh, basically on our planet currently. Well, with growing markets, there are growing challenges. So for, um, for this presentation, I have picked some challenges from the Indian market, especially because recently there were some FDA warning letters and some uh, governmental news also from India. So as you can see, FDA criticized over inadequate GMP inspection uh, in India and China. So they're unhappy with the, let's say, government authority doing the inspections. FDA slams three of Indian drug makers form uh, for a three fillings. Government notifies the new drug making standards after overseas death, uh, gives firms up to a year to implement. So in India, the government needed to step up to basically force Indian company to get their quality under control. Of course, not every company is bad, but the growth is too strong so that quality can keep up. So when you grow too fast, uh, quality will always be, let's say, hit. And in this case, we can see it um, based on warning letters, based on uh, authority observations. Overall, in pharma manufacturing, India imposes stringent quality controls. So I don't think India can solve this issue within a year. They will most likely need a decade, like everybody else. And once you're finished, there are the new regulations coming constantly. It's loop after loop after loop. What is important to take away today is the pharma market globally is growing drastically, but at the same time has a very, very big amount of challenges in regards to operations, quality, services, um, how to set up a manufacturing plan, how to train your employees, how to do basically anything in a regulated environment. And this is a huge opportunity for everybody who wants to create a good startup in the pharmaceutical area. So if you're a listener, and as I said, this is not for big businesses. This is for a uh, little Jimmy sitting basically in um, the office somewhere in Ch China. <laughs> Maybe you are sitting right now in Peru in your office or you're a student and you, uh, you want, you're getting motivated or inspired by some words I might say or by the news or by you understand the trajectory of the market currently. You have to choose or you can choose currently what you want to become. You can become a GXP service provider or you can uh, become a GMP manufacturer, which means somehow you manage to set up a drug production facility <laughs> with everything it needed. Yeah. And in this presentation, um, I want to first raise your interest and raise your awareness that this is possible, that this is actually needed. Um, just give you a very high level overview of the challenges you will have and how you could overcome these challenges. So first of all, if you have never heard it, you will have to do with a lot of regulations, with a lot of rules, a lot of guidelines, a lot of best practices. And these are basically um, embedded in the um, authority regulations, for example, the European Medical Association, EMA, the Food and Drug Administration of the USA, the Indian health authorities themselves. Wherever you produce something, you have to um, comply with the local regulation set Whenever you sell something to another country, you need additionally comply with this country um, regulation set or guidelines where you are selling. So this is a lot of um, regulations you have to consider. Also, this is just a little snapshot, um, but that's why many big players, medium players, small players basically have challenges because they need to overcome all of these things. Um, going into the operational side of things, you have, of course, the supply chain which means from research and development to, uh, let's say, going commercial, getting the registrations done, doing the clinical trials, going into a, a scale-up phase uh, where you transfer your laboratory scale to a big manufacturing scale, finding a million partners. There are so many challenges you need to overcome to basically get your first pill, the drug, a vial out on the, uh, to the market. And... Um, the market is growing drastically. It's, it's absolutely necessary that new, innovative and motivated people go into the market. And my strong recommendation is that when you start anything in this area, or when you really try to consider to start anything, have the GMP quality aspects from the first second in your mind. 
if you set up your company wrong, whether or not you're a service provider or a manufacturer, it will be much more expensive and much harder to correct it later. Think correctly, GMP and business oriented from the first minute. It's very important. You can be right now a student. You can be a rich person sitting at home, whatever. You all have the opportunity to take your first step in the pharmaceutical market with a very low investment even. Yeah, you need the right network, the right know-how, the right guidance, and then it's possible. So you have a unique opportunity right now. What you need is courage and connections at the end. <laughs> Whether or not you run a government or a company um, with the right connections, everything is possible. Without connections, it will most likely fail. Yeah. So what you should do, if you think, this is interesting for me, I want to think about this. So first of all, make a decisive decision that you want this. Don't mess around. Don't um, have doubts. If you want to make it, if this interests you, then make your decision really decisively. Second, create a high-level business plan. One page, two pages, three pages. You don't need to fill out a book. You cannot predict what will come in two years. However, set for yourself a starting goal. What will you focus on? What can you do right now based on your know-how? Or where can you get the corresponding know-how? Third of all, contact us to get started. I personally will review your business case for free, completely for free. Why? Because it's about patient safety, patient health. It's about making new connections between each other. It's simply the right thing. I don't see any problem for me to sit down and review your high-level business plan. Also, don't be worried. I have other experts in the company. We will have a look. Um, recommendation. Start as a service provider for this massively growing market. Second, if you have managed and gained some experience in the service provider area, you have founded your company, you have some teams, you have some experience, then think about creating the next level business plan, get some money from your bank, from your government, even there we can help you, we can support you to create a potential small scale GMP production facility. Normally my experience is this, if somebody created a empty GMP compliant uh, production facility, there are, there are automatically some big players coming towards you because they're all at the absolute limit of their output. They are looking for GMP CMOs, um, contract manufacturing organizations. They're looking for reliable, high quality partners that can produce stuff for them. So the really the possibilities are endless here. Um, have an edge on the market, uh, use our network, and know how. So what we can provide to you and we will, I will make sure that this is as much and as long as possible for free for you or to an absolute ridiculous reduced price is complete a GMP employee certification for yourself. So you are qualified to give the GMP services or for your team and employees. Um, the next thing is I will make sure you have access to our network through our platform farmatching.com where you can provide your services to a global audience and you hopefully, hopefully, hopefully can basically get contracts over our platform. And in the center is our company where we are ready for you to basically really help you, um, give you good consultancy, what to do, uh, whether or not there is a price tag behind this depends on your um, project and how big it is. Of course, you know, if we need to invest one month of time, somebody needs to pay our one month of time there. However, if you have small questions, you need small guidance, it's not a problem. You will ping me in LinkedIn or via email and I will provide you the right answer. I'm doing this or we as a company want to do this to, as I said, expand our network, expand our connections and really motivate people to get a foothold in this undersaturated market. Although we have such a growth in the market, the market is still undersaturated. That's why we have so many shortages so often of medicine. You can and will succeed if you make a decisive decision to take action and to really stick to it. I'm absolutely convinced by this. Of course, you need to do the right things, obviously. Yeah. And this is the challenging part, by the way. <laughs> However, you have access to us and to our know how, to our network. It makes things easier. Trust me. So, welcome to a global community. If you are by accident a big business already seeing this video or being part of this uh, webinar, please feel free to contact me. We can give you access to this entire network and opportunities as well, especially Farmony for 
employee qualification and a recruitment tool for your HR is really, really pure gold in my opinion. Um, we will also handle your visa procedures if you need to get employees to Europe. We will support you in this regard. And of course, for the individual professionals, you will also have the opportunity to go through our coaching program. Don't be worried. I'm not pitching you a coaching package, basically. However, if you want to start this, you can definitely get enough know-how uh, for, for the Southeastern market with these packages, with this certification to start your business. And we will support you from end to end if needed. We are there for you. Um, if you want to do this, if you want more information, you can fill out the um, survey. Candice will provide you the link here. And uh, in the survey, by the way, you can also at the end uh, request a participation certificate, which I will basically hand sign for you. So you have a nice certificate and you can show that you know how to start founding a GMP compliance startup. Um, you will get this uh, slide afterwards, of course. And if you want to stay up to date, because I plan to really boost the startup mentality in pharma for economically developing countries, you know, I have, I'm a very limited uh, person in this regard, but I will do my best. I simply want to try my best to make this happen because I did it myself in Germany. It was freaking hard. It is still freaking hard, but you know, I have, we have as a company and as a team overcome so many challenges. You don't need to repeat and go through these challenges. You can simply jump on our train. We have built a really streamlined, good train. You can jump on our train and just benefit from it. Quality management systems, software, automation, compliance, know-how, customers, network, everything. However, you must make a decision to start, to really want this. All of this will be shared later in this uh, chat of this webinar by Candice. And I would be really pleased to stay in touch with you and to now switch over to the comment sections and to see if you have any comments. Candice, help me and take over. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Let me just move that out of the way. Thank you very much, Ali, um, for this information. I do have a, a couple of questions for you. Um, and the first one is, um, and don't forget to unmute yourself, um, is why did you start your company? Well, um, I worked in a laboratory when I was younger. I had my education in a GMP laboratory from 2005 to 2008. And then I moved to Switzerland, where I worked for Roche in the oncological release laboratory. Then I moved to global project management in Roche. And after several years, I moved back to Germany because I missed my family. And at a certain point, I was headhunted already. I was just 25 years old. I was headhunted by, uh, let's say, big pharma players because they wanted to implement global systems. And they just saw on... LinkedIn and the German platform Xing that I have experience with the quality management systems, trackwise from Sparta systems, for example. So they had hunted me when I was 25 for a global, really important uh, project. That was already the first time where I knew, why do they headhunt me? Like, there, there must be surely other more qualified people out there, yeah? So that was when I made my decision, I want this. This is like... The market is growing, um, the market is exploding, um, the know-how is limited basically in what is available personal-wide or, um, or expert-wise on the market. So I really want to do this. I am good at this and I can expand on this. So that was the moment where one step after the other, I make a decision, I have my business plan, I go to the bank, but I was alone. I fell on my knees a million times. I have so many scars on my soul <laughs> from basically sleepless nights, money problems, customer problems, bank problems, team problems. And uh, however, of course, you know, it's an evolving thing. It evolves, 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 evolves. And um, hopefully it gets better and better and better. You know, there are always up and downs, but the overall average line must go up. And so I have, um, this is kind of a two part question actually for you. It might start, or oh, might go into a three part question. So uh, there's two things I want to kind of um, understand from a startup founder perspective, but also from an operations perspective and a bit of a lessons learned. So 
in general, as someone who's uh, started their own business, particularly um, in Germany and Europe, which is very hard to um, start your own business here, what has been your biggest lesson as a startup founder or as a company founder? <laughs> my my honest <laughs> biggest lesson is don't start a company in Germany. That's my <laughs> most honest opinion I can give to you. <laughs> I think everywhere else on the planet, it's easier than in Germany. Uh, that would be the number one thing. But um, to add some value in general, the biggest lesson, well, that's also, again, a German thing is get the best possible tax office from day one. That's maybe the second uh, important thing. I know that in other countries, it's more automated and easier. But um, you see the, the biggest challenges are often organizational-wise, administrative-wise and um, not re really operational because once you have the operational know-how you can deploy it well if you have a working foundation and a working um, structure um, of course uh, to give you an answer maybe from a more experienced point of view is to have a more bigger focus on marketing and sales in a very conservative and highly regulated industry which is the pharma and gmp industry because the so-called customer um, sales life cycle is really high. You need maybe a year of work to get one customer. And um, in other areas, it takes just two phone calls, three phone calls. Yeah. So these things, this very, let's say, money and um, administrative focused thing are my big learnings. Of course, there are a million other learnings, but this, this were and are still the big challenges here in Germany. If you have a startup in India or China, your challenges will be different. Mm. Yeah, same in Australia. Your startup um, challenges there are, are much more, um, well, they're, they're less, it's much easier to start a company. Um, and the second question is around the shift between you, um, I guess, starting the business as yourself you know, as a solo person um, needing to be both um, a founder and operations person and doing the work. And as your company has grown, how have you um, handled that transition from needing to really now step out of the operational work and into leading the business? How have you managed that transition for yourself? Well, for me, I haven't managed that still. <laughs> I'm still working <laughs> on that. Um, but it's also, I think, um, depending on the setup of the company and um, the managing director himself or herself, for me, I still want to be involved because I stay up to date. I know what the frontline developments in the industry are. I know what challenges the laboratories have, the manufacturers have, the uh, ERP guys have, the LIMS guys have, the QMS guys have, um, but at a certain point, so I have still not reached this after seven years. At a certain point, however, of course, the administrative work, management work will be too much. Currently, we mm. still have it under control. Yeah. And I guess to to round this up, um, you did talk a little bit around the tips of um, uh, the things you need to really look at from the ground up when you're starting in this industry, which is around making sure that you do have a, a good business plan, but not too detailed, a high level business plan and starting as a service provider so that you can really set yourself in the industry and making sure that you have um, quality at the forefront of everything you do from day one. But um, of all of those things, what would be a, a tip for uh, startup founders out there in the industry if they're really kind of unsure about whether they want to take that step forward or not? Well, it really depends on your um, situation, um, whether or not or where you are on the planet, what your, let's say, also what your financial situation is. If you need to buy food tomorrow and you cannot even think about these issues it's of course more challenging um, however what might help you is to simply think that what you do here or what you could do in the pharma and gmp environment is based in a crisis safe um, industry so no matter what happens people will need medicine and it will most likely just get more and more and more 
So it's not a luxury area. People will need your services. Companies will need your services and people will need the end product. So that's, I think, a very simple business decision that will help you. Um, everybody on the planet is more eager to give you financial um, support in the area of healthcare and pharma mm -hmm. because everybody knows that it is a secure industry that once uh, you are in and you make money, um, it's uh, more secure than other industries. Yeah, it's, um, as I said, people will need their medication in 10 years, in 100 years, in 500 years, most likely. Yeah, So um, there is really, you must, if you are interested in this topic and you feel you feel that my voice resonates uh, inside of you, then you should really consider this step. And in your case, it's much easier because you don't do it alone. Uh, I absolutely mean it that we are here to support you. And if you are a single guy having a great idea and want to move forward, you don't need to pay a dime. Just ask us for help and we will support you as good as we can. I think that's a really great note to end it on today is um, the reminder that if you are wanting to create a startup in the industry, if you're someone that has these amazing ideas, but you don't have the tools, the resources or, or the network to kind of take that step forward is you don't have to do this by yourself. You know, make connections with people, contact us, uh, get in touch with us, whether it's through LinkedIn or whether it's through our email or through chats or whatever avenue that um, you can get hold of us. Because as a part of our goals, uh, both at Zaman and at Farm Uni, is making sure that we give people opportunities to create these businesses. Um, and also that means accessible education, which is around also how to set up your businesses and get those things moving forward. So thank you very much to Ali Reza for your presentation today and all of this valuable information. In the chat that is linked to this, I will put in the links for the survey. So in the survey, please tell us what you need and what you are interested in. And also if you would like to have a certificate for participating today in the webinar, that is all of that in there. Um, if you need assistance with your business or with qualifications, you can fill all that information in. We'd be happy to help you out. We'll also pop in a copy of the slides for the presentation. And I've also popped in um, a link to Ali's LinkedIn profile so that you can go and connect with him directly um, as the CEO of Zaman and get the ball rolling. So thank you very much, everyone, for participating today. And I'm sure we'll talk to you again in the next webinar. Thank you, guys. Bye. 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 <laughs> Bye.